All right, everyone. I am excited. This is Enfan Akpan, the professor. I am an actual professor, assistant professor of accounting. As promised, we're here at Cobb's Capital. We've got we've got them in the house. I want I'll let you do your introduction, and we're going to talk about the metaverse, the metaverse today. So please tell tell them about yourself, who you are, what's going on. So my name is Deza. Also, my real name is Michael. Uh, I am. I'm, I'm a content creator for Cobbs Capital. I handle all the stuff that comes with cryptocurrencies and NFTs and the whole blockchain space. Um, it's a it's a greatly expanding space right now. And, you know, we, we're trying to, you know, make our way in, uh, through it. We're trying to make a, a ground hold for it, you know, make sure we're part of it because we do enjoy this space. And when it comes to finance and stuff, and you know, we help some people with Cops Capital. We have a Discord. You can join up, learn information, um, learn how to trade, get better at trading, all that kind of good stuff. And you know, learn about the cryptocurrencies and NFTs. And yeah, that's that's about it. You know, just great financial content. Hello, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Uh, we can hear you. you. Came in at the right time. Mm, he perfect. just introduced himself. We're perfect doing a little time. intro. Frank, can perfect. can you tell tell him about yourself? Uh yeah, definitely, definitely. So you know, me and Deja, me and Mike, we are partners at Cops Capital. Um, what I do, I do a lot of options trading with stocks, but also too, I invest heavily in cryptocurrency. And I'm new to NFTs, but I am getting more and more. You know to the intermediate and advanced levels with it. So I am learning a lot about that with the help of Deza, of course. And away from that, just, you know, in general, I've been, I would say I've been involved with the stock market since high school, even before high school, just learning about how to invest, learning about going, you know, into long-term, even medium-term investing and stuff like that. And then I would say once I got into college, university, that's when I really started learning how to trade. Uh, and yeah, you know, the rest is kind of history. You know, I really just started learning how to trade, uh, getting really good at that. And then I really found out what options could do in terms of boosting your portfolio value. And yeah, so. That's, this is awesome. So, uh, I've got, I'm just curious. Are you yeah, more, are, are you more focused on the, uh, stock side of things or on the crypto side of things uh definitely more stocks or if i would he's I would more say, stocks and yeah. i'm more crypto. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> okay that's, that's good so you, you got both sides covered absolutely absolutely and not that i'm not into crypto because i am into crypto heavily but i do like like i said i trade options and i do you know get involved with stocks quite often so every day i'm literally like i'll hit up mike and i'll say hey you know i'm trading my options today you know i did this trade i did that trade so i'm, I'm definitely I'm also the same way out. i mean <laughs> i entered my you know financial journey through like stock options and regular you know stocks and options and stuff and then I came across cryptocurrency and I was like, uh, this is this is the one for me. I like this stuff. This is this is, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's good. That's good. Well, well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming and it, to talk about something uh near and dear to me, and then that's really been out there, and that is the metaverse. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for having us, Professor. Really thank appreciate it. Us. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, my pleasure. So what, what's your take? Let's talk about it. What, what's your take on the metaverse? Uh, I like the expert. I let our resident cops capital expert take this one away. <laughs> so when it comes to the metaverse, you kind of want to start by understanding what it is. I mean, it's not too far fetched to say that it's pretty much just, you know, a virtual world like you would see in movies. Right. It's some like it's some heavy, you know, sci fi things because, you know, a company like Facebook, you know, which is now meta is getting into it, but they're far off from being able to actually implement it on a day-to-day -day basis. And we see things like, you know, we're on StreamYard right now and, you know, Facebook has their own, you know, version of that. I forget the name of it, but it might've been called like offices or something or communities, but it, it's like the first steps in like, you're going into a world, a virtual world 
and you can move and interact and like you could turn and have facial expressions and stuff. And it's kind of just like digitizing yourself. So what, you know, an easy way to look at it is we, we like to look at the, you know, the gaming side of it. Um, Cause I think that's going to be the place where a lot of focus and attention is made. And uh, on the gaming side of it, like a lot of people reference like ready player one, that, that that's a movie where mm -hmm. that's what it would look like. It's just an open operable world. There's a lot of things you can do inside of it. And, you know, when it comes to the metaverse, there's there are some companies that are starting to, you know, make that stronghold and become the be you know be the top dogs for the next few years of the metaverse. And I would say uh, the Central Land, Sandbox, those are the top two. I'll say those are the mm -hmm. top two. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a third one that I could say, but there are others, you know, <laughs> got Omnia, things like that. Yeah. But those are the top two right now. They're definitely pulling in the most money. They got the most heads turning. Their, their cryptocurrency is doing well. So, yeah. And I would actually say, over on my end, when I think about the metaverse, uh, on top of already what uh, Mike kind of already said, I would say that for me, the metaverse is just a way for people to be able to kind of uh, just, I would say it's the future of business, it's the, uh, the future of offering different services, and in general, it's just the future of entertainment and the future of just. I wouldn't say necessarily living, but the future of just kind of getting away from what your regular daily life will be, because if we see already a lot of what the metaverse companies can do, and even not just with the metaverse, but a lot of the times with NFTs, like for instance, we just dropped an NFT video where Gary Vee, if you've heard of Gary Vaynerchuk, he's doing like an NFT restaurant where you could kind of go into the restaurant, you know, you could buy the NFT and you'll have like a somewhat of like a lifetime membership and be able to just have like a whole bunch of different meetings with people and just, you know, have, you know, fun there. But of course, that's going to move on to the metaverse too, but also as well. Well, if we look at different things that have been going on in the central land or even in sandbox we've heard of snoop dogg concerts going on we've heard of different people being able to present their art galleries there we've just been having uh different meetups within the metaverse and i think that's just a way for people to be able to say hey yeah we can do this you know in a you know real life uh experience type of way or we can do this in a virtual way where one it'll be a lot more cost efficient for our business and for you as well too but it'll also be a way to connect a lot faster and a lot I would say more in depth and more meaningful than you would, you know, if you were to just text somebody or DM somebody or just try to meet them, you know, on social media or something like that. And I think that the metaverse in that aspect is really just going to change how we're really thinking about everything going into the future, because a lot of people could just offer what they really have or what they would like to benefit from or what the people would like to receive on the consumer end of things and just say, hey, you know, this is going to be something that I really can use and I can really just get away from my regular life going to the metaverse i can say for instance i could go play games with my friends i could go shopping if i need to because we've seen the walmart shopping where they you know go into the metaverse and order stuff and just kind of go grocery shopping from the couch or i could go have a concert you know with snoop dogg at 5 p.m and then you know take off my goggles take off whatever it is and then i could go back to work later on that evening or whatever so yeah, yeah. That that is a good. You made a good point. And here's my question. So we, we we've got the the crypto expert there, and and you mentioned Decentraland. I've been in there. Um, the Sandbox. I've been in there. And my the biggest question that I have, especially in the Sandbox, and I recommend anybody you know take a trip to the Sandbox, go and open, see and look at the assets. Who has the money? Because you mentioned those those tickets to Snoop Dogg's mm -hmm. uh, to, to get into his parties and things. These are thousands upon thousands of dollars land. People are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in, in crypto. Right. And in, in, in sand to 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 buy land, to buy items. So where's this money and where, where would the regular person be able to get into this? You know, so, right. So I think it's about like, it's, it's about investing, right? So you're right. I'll just correct you on one thing. You don't have to really, you don't have to buy a ticket into like a, a concert or anything like that. But if you do want to own land, you have to buy the land as an NFT. So it's an investment like you would, you have to think about it as a parallel to the real world. Because if you buy real estate in the real world, all right, it's going to, you know, you build it up. It provides you value. It's the same thing with the land in these games. I recently bought a, a land for another metaverse type world. It was called uh, Worldwide Webland. And 
I bought one of their apartments. I think I bought it for like 0.6 Ethereum, maybe like that at the time, maybe it was like what, $2,000. And then it shot all the way up to like 1.6 Ethereum, right? So it grew in value as more people, you know, get into the space, as more people find out about it, as more people want to enjoy it, uh, what the, whatever the company that has this virtual land provides. So you don't just, you don't want to just buy land from anywhere, but you know, you don't want to just buy any type of NFT, right? But when it comes to the virtual land, you know, I, I, I said at first, like, you don't want to buy land from anywhere. It's so early that pretty much almost any metaverse land that you get into will most likely go up in value. It's not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, like, if you look at a company, you like what they're doing. They seem to have, like, an upward trajectory. Um, They have good people behind them, you know, good... uh good CEOs, good devs, all that. I you take, you know, it's a good investment. You you'll most likely, you know, it's so early that you'll most likely make some money. Not financial mm -hmm. advice, of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And definitely to kind of add on top of that too, uh from like the stock perspective, right? So if we're talking about the metaverse and who could get in and who could buy it, it's the same question as, okay, well, like if you were to look at Tesla stock, you know, something that, I mean, recently it's been falling quite a lot or even Amazon stock where it's like thousands of dollars to buy in. And most people are like, mm, okay, I can't really afford that. But if you think about the early days of it, you know, when Amazon was like $20, Tesla was around $100 or something like that. Well, you know, maybe people go out every weekend or so, they go out, you know, party with their friends. They might go to the restaurant. You're easily spending two, $300 already at minimum. And it's just like, okay, who has that money? Well, if you save it for two, three weekends, maybe you can get yourself a nice uh, a nice nft that might you know for instance give you access to the metaverse or for instance we also did a link style video which is like a golf club type of membership and whether or not they get into the metaverse we'll see but it's you know a really unique idea where for instance for this golf club membership you can you know have your nice membership is costing around i think maybe what mm, six thousand dollars seven thousand dollars something like that for a lifetime membership whereas you know a regular traditional golf club membership might cost you thirty thousand dollars each year, something of that nature at the Recurring low payment. end of things. Yeah, exactly. Link style, Link style, it, they're doing some great stuff. They're partnered with like mm -hmm. Steph Curry and stuff. And yeah, it's a it's a golf club membership, but mm -hmm. as an NFT, it's lifetime. You could trade it to someone else. Like absolutely, it, it's a, like the blockchain is 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 going to be the way that business is done mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's such it's so much more fluid, you know, and the the potential for gains is is so much higher exactly just, you know, exactly like why, would I, why would i buy a regular <laughs> golf membership when i can get this yeah. lifetime golf membership with this nft and then exactly. have the ability to sell it later you can't sell a golf membership or you can lease it out so you can lease it out and you can rent it to people and i think that's where the utility and the value comes from when you talk about who can afford the metaverse because yeah okay you know at the rip it could be very expensive for a good amount of people especially too for people who are you know average workers earning minimum wage but when you think about okay this is going to be a longer term investment well if this is a longer term investment that you're expecting to pay dividends in one way or one form or another then you're going to say okay i'm gonna save up some money excuse me and i'm gonna go uh buy this and i'm gonna see what happens you know later on as the metaverse continues to develop as this space continues to develop, as this uh, project continues to develop. And I think that's the way a lot of people kind of, you know, miss this thing because they say, you know, like we see all the memes all the time, right? We see, oh, you know, some 19 year old kids, you know, I'm sitting here working like a nine to five job with some 19 year old kids. So like a meme, like not even a meme. So like some JPEG for like 2.9 million or, you know, something like that. Yeah. But the reality is if you, you really think chance. about Exactly. It is up to chance. But if you think about it, a lot of these people, they did go into it thinking, OK, this is going to be some type of investment where I have to put my money at stake. And whether it's stocks, whether it's crypto, whether it's the metaverse, NFTs, investments are inherently risky. I do it every day when I trade. You have to risk something to be able to make some money. So the people who can afford it are just going to be those who are able to take on that risk and are who are able to say, OK, I can't allocate this amount of money that maybe I would have used elsewhere or just, you know, squandered elsewhere. And I could put it here and see what happens with that. And I think that's actually a really good thing that people can start thinking about because it's just like not everything is going to just cost thousands and thousands of dollars i'm not saying every ten dollar project is going to blow up and just make you you know a millionaire or even a couple hundred thousand but you can start looking in to say okay well if i save up you know a couple hundred dollars each week or from each paycheck or for instance like people when they got back their government checks and they were saying okay you know i have the biden checks i'm doing everything with the stimmies you know a lot of people they just went out and spend them but you could have taken a portion of that money and you know gone and spent a lot it, of people and put it, that so. check straight into nfts or cryptocurrency <laughs> And that's they, true they, that a lot of people true. want from that, you know. <laughs> that's you, you know, a fourteen hundred, you know, stimulus check. 
uh, six or seven months ago, however long that was ago, maybe eight months ago now. That was really really before the bubble, like, you know, started to burst. That was really before the bubble started to burst. And, yeah, a lot of people, you know, made off like bandits. They made off like bandits with uh, off that 1400. People were riding the wave, but I I, I still, um, (laughs) hey, rural. I still um, say that with the with the NFT, you made a good point about Tesla about how it started mm-hmm. off a couple of hundred dollars, and now it's in the thousands of dollars. But what what I mean is, you go to the sandbox, you see mm-hmm. the land. It, it it's not it's not a couple of hundred dollars. That's it's true. Tens but, of thousands mm-hmm. of dollars to millions of dollars. But that's the, that's true. That's the, that's the thing. Hold on, Frank. I got yeah. It. Because okay, okay. okay. <laughs> you got to think about when these things started. <laughs> you know, the central land and uh, the central land has been out for a while. The the plots weren't always that expensive. You mm-hmm. know, it just like you know the, one of the biggest ones, Board Ape Yacht Club. You know, when I first started with Board Ape Yacht, when I first started with NFTs, Board Ape Yacht Club was like. Maybe around two or three ETH, but I didn't see the vision of what it really could be. And oh, now man. you're not getting the board of yacht club. Like, okay, let's say that was like you know eight thousand, nine thousand dollars. You're not getting the board of yacht club now unless you got a couple hundred racks. That's and true. it's the same That's thing with the plots of true. land. In the beginning, they were they were around like that much price. They were around like two ETH. You know, I could have got one by myself. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't just see the the trajectory of what the land could go. Yep, it took off. It took off for sure. That's true. And I think, it, got, also, I think mm-hmm. it has more room to grow too. So yeah. the price that you're going to get now, I don't even think it's that expensive. Yeah. And also really actually to literally just to kind of emphasize that last point that Daisy just made. When you think about traditional real estate, right? When you get into traditional real estate, you automatically have to have good credit. You have to have, you know, some form of saying, hey, you know, I've had this job for this long. I live where I live. And, you know, depending on how good your credit is, I would say, pretty much probably going to put down what 15 to 20, 20, maybe, maybe even 25% down, you know, until the total of what you might pay. And then of course you're going to pay that off over the course of time that you actually have to get this uh, land that you're going to have. And that doesn't even include, you know, are you going to renovate this land? Uh, do you have to make any repairs? Do you have to hire contractors? Uh, what kind of materials do you need for who you're going to rent it out to all these different things and costs that go into it? Whereas that goes to the metaverse, right? Maybe let's say on the low end, right? Because the low end, I would say, if I go into Sandbox to Central Land, I'll probably find something for anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand. Well, that ten to fifteen thousand, I could get a decent amount of real estate, not necessarily like a huge plot or anything, but I could get you know a decent location, maybe near you know a nice name brand or something, and I could really build that up into my own where people are passing through it quite often. But that's it. I don't have to renovate it. I don't have to, you know, get taxed on it. I mean, you know, I'm saying like when I actually like get into it, like, of course, you have to pay like, you know, the actual taxes afterward. But I mean, like when you actually get into it and, you know, a lot of other things that would actually go into traditional real estate, which actually make it really expensive to kind of bar out a good amount of people from getting into traditional real estate or anything like that. You don't really have to have that when you go into the metaverse and buy this. And a lot of, you know, big companies are already like literally just scooping up all the land. We've seen Atari. We've seen Coinbase. We've seen Gemini. We've seen Binance. We've seen so many companies really just buying it up because I think they already know that, okay, this is going to be huge. We need to get it now before this is really, really expensive. And that's why that's why it goes back to Tesla, because even now I've been monitoring Tesla since what maybe 2018. And I remember when people were like, oh, it'll never get to a thousand dollars per share. Got to a thousand dollars per share. People like, okay, now it'll never get to like two thousand dollars per share. Got to two thousand and then <laughs> a stock split. And you know, it just keeps on increasing, increasing in value. And not saying that Tesla isn't a bad company. I love Tesla, you know, everything Elon's doing, I think is great. But it's just like when you see them really, you know, making strides and really bringing value to the customers and bringing value to the investors, that's when a lot of stuff starts happening on the back end. And I think for the meta a lot of stuff is already happening on the back end, but it's just no value really there to kind of say, hey, this is what's happening. This is what the future value will be. Besides, you know, right now, like you already mentioned, it's quite expensive to kind of get in, at least for the average person. So a lot of people are kind of you know, like, oh, they're all put by that, I would say. But like I said, I think, you know, just that current barrier to entry, that's fairly low compared to what it will be. Let's say give it three years, give it five years. I think this is nothing compared to what we'll be seeing soon. Wow. So you said it's, it's nothing. Oh, rule in the chat. There, there's a, a message. Uh, there's some lands on other platforms like Cardano and mm-hmm. some others that may be cheap enough for folks to afford to mm-hmm. uh, to lower risk. Exactly. I could I could list you off a, a bunch of 
different um, spaces. Uh, there's Somnium, there's World Wide Web Land, mm-hmm. there's uh, Crypto Voxels. I mean, there's a lot of even new and newer NFTs that are coming out with their own form of land. Um, Artifact Studios, they came out with pods mm-hmm. that you could uh, go uh, into. Pods, and so lovely. <laughs> you know, so you so just like Frank was saying, like you want to get into you want to get into one of these metaverses that you see upside potential with that has just like Tesla that has like a good team behind it that is working to provide that value. Uh, if you don't want to, you know, pay the big bucks for the ones that are already established. So if you want to get something that's newer up and coming, yeah, but, you get, but understand there is going to be risk to that because yep. you know, mm-hmm. with anything, just like with anything. Well, you know, uh, Days, uh, you made a great point about the board a yacht board a yacht club. So let me ask you this: Is it? And this is I, I read some something on this. Is the value really in the NFT, or is it in the Discord, the network that you get access to by having the NFT? The the value of board a yacht club is a tricky one. I think. It's almost, uh, it's really, it's kind of tricky, but you know, on the two points that you mentioned, um, the, the entity itself has value. Like anything has value if people say, mm-hmm. it does, you know, mm-hmm. just like, you know, Pokemon cards that, you know, they're not valuable to you. <laughs> I mean, maybe you like Pokemon. I don't know. <laughs> they're definitely not valuable to me. I don't really like that. So, you know, the Board of Yacht Club is kind of at this point like a status symbol, you know. It's mm-hmm. one of the OG, uh, it's one of the OG NFT projects. So that having it lets mm-hmm. you know, like, hey, I've been I've been in the community, I've been doing this thing. And then the network of people that came with it is also great. And they they have been taking steps to provide value to the people, they've been mm-hmm. partnering with other companies, they actually have their own spot in the central land that you can mm-hmm. go visit. Um, they uh what else have they done? They uh they have a video game that they created. They yep. actually had like a, a thing for all board Ape yacht club holders. They had a party mm-hmm. where they invited like Lil Baby and some other rappers uh, and stuff. Because Lil Baby is a member. <laughs> yeah. So you have to create value with your NFT. And at this point, like when when it was like the gold rush for NFTs and everyone mm-hmm. was just buying anything they saw, the difference now is that you can't just create an NFT and think you can create the value later. Mm-hmm. You have to have a, it, it it's like a real deal business now you have to have a game plan you have to have your website yep. you have to have a roadmap of what you're going to do what things you're going to implement you know and and honestly it goes even deeper than that because unless you have something that people can utilize on a day-to-day mm-hmm. basis the chances that you're going to be board of yacht club is not there because y- board of yacht club yep. doesn't have anything that you can do with it on a day-to-day basis like these mm-hmm. these uh metaverses like these metaverses mm-hmm. you can go in you can interact you can uh buy stuff Board of Yacht Club is just pretty much that. It's just the NFT. So it, you know, they got lucky. They became like the Gucci or the, <laughs> the yeah, that's the Dior. New. Like, yeah, there's NFT. something they're up there. They lose the time, something. <laughs> so now, so now, any company that comes afterwards or comes in 2022, you have to have a game plan. It's not as simple yeah. as just throwing out my art. No, you have yeah. to have a game plan. Unless you're going to be, uh, because there is a whole side of NFTs that people don't realize that is just like a real deal artist or one of one mm-hmm. artists like that that still has to permeate there's still nft music things like mm-hmm. that you know and all of this stuff is gonna is gonna breed the ground for the metaverse for sure yeah you know this trade of stuff you know trading in mm-hmm. art trading in uh business trading in uh gaming nfts community all yep. this is gonna help build the metaverse for sure yeah and i i really like i really like that question too professor because when you think about a lot of these nfts that come out for instance you know not everybody's a people you know you're not going to make some art that's just really groundbreaking that you know christie's or sotheby's is going to say oh yeah we're going to sell this to our investors for millions of dollars and you know like days already mentioned there we already i mean not to say that you know the gold rush can't come again because this is a mainstream adoption that we're seeing just yet we're so early into the nft i think i think like one to five percent of people own NFTs. exactly so 
you know, we still have yet to see what will really happen with the space. But as of now, for the people that are more experienced than I've been into it, it's no longer just, hey, I'm going to make a JPEG. Hey, I'm going to hop on, uh, you know, Adobe Photoshop or Microsoft Paint and just make something that looks unique or make even, you know, some type of generative art where the AI kind of creates something that I can sell it. Because a lot of people, they do want utility. But even on the utility side of things, I've been in discords where, you know, they say, hey, we have you know, this celebrity who's doing this, or, you know, this person is going to make sure that all the money goes to this, uh, you know, charity or this fund and it's allocated here. And at the end of the day, it just falls apart because that's not really the truth. Because a lot of the time when they do get that money, they just kind of say, okay, we're out. We'll see you later. Yeah, it's not and a good not business only, plan either. <laughs> it's not a good business plan. And then it's just kind of shaky because it's just like the people at the top say, Hey, I'm backing this. And once they get the money, they say, okay, well, I'll let whoever else is, you know, kind of beneath me, uh, you know, I'll let them deal with the repercussions and just kind of figure out what the community is going to do because a lot of the times when you do see these discord communities a lot of them are in shambles to be you know quite frank so, pumping dumps yeah it's called pumping, pumping dumps. dumps they are pumping dumps <laughs> yeah <laughs> on that note here's this this is I'm, I'm pulling out the accounting side of my brain so there's mm -hmm. something called going concern mm -hmm. so we we're, we've been talking the metaverse we've been talking about um uh, Decentraland, uh, the Sandbox. So in, from what I understand, they're off offshore. These are offshore businesses. No. They, is that correct? Some of Maybe them, some of them. Yeah, sure. some of I would them say, are in different yeah. countries. Some of them are in the US. Yeah, I think, I think a good amount, at least, I would say some of the more, at least the ones that are like directly tied to celebrities are definitely, you know, within the U.S. because they're using either their brand or the companies or their firms to kind of build up the NFT, build up the hype. And I think probably, you know, the smarter people are the people who have, you know, more knowledge as to, you know, how the taxes and business side of things work would have that offshore. But, yeah. All right. Let, let, oh, let me backtrack and rephrase. OK, OK. To your knowledge or any of the besides, and I'm not I'm taking meta out of the, the equation. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about uh, Decentraland, when we talk about uh, uh, the Sandbox, they're not publicly traded. Mm -hmm. Correct. No. So their financials are not, we're not privy to their financials. Correct. So going concern means what happens, they go out of business. What happens to the crypto? What happens to the, the assets? What happens to the land? If they just say, okay, we're, we're, is that what you call a rug pull? pull. Mm, if, they go out of business, mm -hmm. if they go out of business, I wouldn't really consider it a rug pull. But, yeah. mm. you know, with those companies like Sandbox and Decentraland, mm -hmm. like it's kind of like saying, you know, if, you know, it's kind of, it, it's kind of tough. It, it it, like if you said, if you I said would like say if, uh, if we're talking about sandbox, right? If you're talking about like sandbox or the central land going out of business, okay. that would be similar to at least in my opinion, I'll say that's similar to saying like, what if YouTube get, uh, went out of business? Because the central land and sandbox yeah. themselves, they're not necessarily offering you know uh, direct services. More or less, okay, you can build on our platform and then do what you want on our platform as long as you adhere to our guidelines. That's what I would think. Now for the individual projects. Once those kind of like, you know, mess up and stuff, that's a different story. That's, you know, kind of where it gets into the rug pull category. Not saying that if they do go out of business, that's a rug pull because, you know, sometimes people do get hit hard. Their businesses, you know, they go bankrupt, whatever it might be. Or but, a new, you know, new company comes up, you know. Like, exactly. You know, something customers. that you know, puts them out of business. Yeah, exactly. So I would say that more or less is like, you know, rug pull territory. But, you know, overall, just like the Central Land or Sandbox, I would say if they were to go out of business, that necessarily wouldn't be a rug pull. That would just be more or less like a service going down. You can probably just go somewhere else to kind of figure out how go for instance like if youtube were to go down you start vimeo you start instagram you start facebook you know but what yeah. happens to your property you got land in there it's gonna uh, definitely go down in value yeah it will, it will. <laughs> that is true the, the funny That's thing is, is that you know it, it's not gonna go out of business in the same sense of like mm -hmm. you know a real world business like if you know toys r us goes out of business they shut down the stores they strip off the sand uh, yeah. you know the i think the, the central land will always be able to run but whether they implement, whether they're still like progressing the business and implementing new things and, you know, talking to the people, that's the the area where I think they'll go out of business. So then, you know, because they're not mm -hmm. implementing those new things and things like that, then your, your, the value of your NFT is going to go down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or the value of the cryptocurrency is going to go down, the mana token. Yep. Mm. So, so that's a risk. 
It is yeah. risky. Yeah, yeah. It definitely. And that, that's but, why I say yeah. you have to do the research. You have to go into yeah. the discords. You have to read the white paper. A lot of people don't read the white papers. They that's just, true. you know, oh, they, they look at the Twitter followers and that's enough mm -hmm. for them. Hey, I'm diving in. No, nah, that's not enough. You can buy Twitter followers. You have yep, to read the sure white can. papers. See what they're providing. Look at the roadmap. Make sure that the uh, the people that founded it, the, the creators, the devs, are mm -hmm. uh, people that you can actually go and find their profile, LinkedIn yep. level, you know. Absolutely. So then yeah. you know, like, okay, this is legit. This is yeah. this is this is legit. They have a plan. They're going places, and yeah. then that's what you're uh, you're t you're uh, participating in. Yeah. You don't yeah, want to just go mow your money into anything. Yeah, because the utility at the end of the day, like Days always tells me, and like we always tell our viewers too, you know, utility is going to be one of the most, if not the most important aspect of getting into any project. And if you go into the, and it's, it's a lot of way to basically falsify things. Just like, you know, we live in an age where, you know, everybody loves clout. Everybody loves to look like they're famous, they're doing something, whatever it might be. And a lot of people what they'll do to kind of falsify this is they might buy followers, they might buy shadows, they might buy, do whatever, you know, they can to really seem like they're doing more than what it is. But if you really go down to like, you know, how to look into different things, for instance, right? If you're looking at a project, let's say they have just a quick example. Let's say you look at an NFT project or something, you say, oh, okay, they have 100,000 followers. But then it, like on Twitter, for instance, but then you go into their Twitter and, you know, they tweet something very or they tweet very regularly. And let's say, for instance, they no, tweet very regularly no and they get like two retweets, you know, two likes. Then it's like, mm, OK, that's weird. Or you go into the discord and nobody's really talking. Nobody's discussing. If you try to contact the devs, they don't really have an idea. They don't even reach back out to you. You know, that's really shady stuff. And I wouldn't say put your money into that. And that goes back into the doing your own due diligence because anybody can really write a white uh, a white paper. And that white paper doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be picture perfect of how the park uh how the park is going to run how everything's going to go you know smoothly so yeah, on that note there are also like right if you if you're not that well versed in this stuff and you know you could look at the white paper you could try to look at the tokenomics but you don't really understand it there mm -hmm. are websites out there that can help you with that stuff like rough yeah, doctor token sniffer to make mm -hmm. you to make sure that the cryptocurrency is attached with projects and stuff like that and the contracts attached with nfts are on the up and up so that, you know, you stay safe before you buy these things, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and also things like, you know, if you're going to buy an NFT from OpenSea, you know, you know, if you're if you're if you're that scared, only buy things with blue check marks, only buy things that have, you know, the OpenSea stamp of approval, things, mm -hmm. you know, taking, you know, precautions like that, for sure. You know, mm -hmm. when you get to the risky place where, you know, you're just NFT gambling, you, you know, yeah. you're gambling on this <laughs> stuff, you're like, I would yeah. buy this. Like, I see all the time. Um. You buy something, you wait, you know, you buy something that day, get a mint, wait till it gets to the top and just sell it all. Just sell it all. And people do it all the time, for sure. It happens yeah. every single day. Thousands, mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. <laughs> uh, NFT will mint today. People will buy 20 of them, sell them all once they get to this highest point. It's, it's, re it's regular. It's pumping dumps. Mm -hmm. So what what is your take? There's so many different metaverse worlds mm -hmm. and you have different uh uh functions you you mentioned meta mm -hmm. what is it horizons their their world mm -hmm. you've got yeah. verbella frames i teach classes and once the pandemic hit i was teaching classes in 2020 in verbella frames i was using that to it's a virtual platform uh then there's spatial Mm -hmm. which was more of a workplace platform and they're pivoting to they, they still have a workplace uh, base but they're pivoting to be a gallery for nfts where you can show mm -hmm. your nfts in in the metaverse rooms and things so you've got all of these different worlds mm -hmm. do you think some of them are do you think there's going to be a convergence or do you think there's going to be really the, the the bigger sharks or the bigger fish are going to eat the smaller mm -hmm. fish or what, mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts on the environment of the metaverse? Would, yeah. On my end, I think that there's definitely two things I like that I've thought about and I've, I think about that quite often. I think there's two things. I think there's one, the first move is advantage. I think a lot of the companies that are getting in and really building up like the central land or sandbox, those are going to be well established well into the future, similar to how we've seen Coinbase, similar to how we see Binance, you know, kind of really take off. Of course, you know, there's Mount Gox back in the day for crypto. We saw Colonia X, we saw KuCoin, you know, a lot of these different ones, but a lot of the big first movers that really got a lot of the funding, they got everything that they needed to, you know, 
dealt with and they really made sure that they provided some type of utility to the investors and customers those are the ones that did well so i think that'll definitely be happening and we'll see that for you know any type of company that is kind of getting in now and really just building themselves up of course you know the central land and you know sandbox are kind of doing that first but even so uh even too um the second point of that that i think will happen is you know similar to how we see on social media right uh you know we have so many different social media platforms we use facebook instagram twitter TikTok. uh even if we go back further you know we have myspace stuff like that and i think that a lot of the companies that really gain a lot of following whether it's a cult following or just a genuine following and a lot of people say hey i really like using this platform i think these will continue to grow and they'll say hey i noticed that you know this is you know somewhat going out of business so i will you know kind of take over you guys similar to how facebook was able to take over instagram and buy them out or, you know, maybe even some companies might say, hey, you know, I'm going to stick around. I'm not going to take the buyout, similar to how Snapchat rejected Facebook's offer. So I think we'll see, you know, a little bit of both, just how we see in the regular world with general companies and, you know, everything else. But overall, I just think that, you know, when we go, we, when we do get into the metaverse and everything that's going on, it's just going to basically be, you know, who's able to really provide the most value to the customers more than it's just like, you know, I'm the biggest company. I have the most money. You don't, you didn't get here before me and, you know, you're not really going to be able to grow. Cause I do think this is, like I said already, a new space where, you know, not everybody's even knowing, uh, not everybody knows about what NFTs or even the metaverse is. And just in general too, not everybody's invested, even if they do know what it is. So, yeah. If you're, if you're talking about like conversions, are you saying like being able to, you saying like being able to like be on the central land and what, and go into sandbox or something? No, I, I mean, there'll be some acquisitions, mm -hmm. companies coming in, buying other companies up and kind of the consolidation oh, of different companies. Because we've got so many different worlds and things going on. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think, you know, at, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it, this is the Internet, right? So having, you know, having a monopoly is probably not going to happen. Right. But yeah, for sure. Like when you look at Facebook making their stance now to be meta, they, you know, they're doing it for a reason because they want to have a stronghold on, you know, metaverse and the technology. They're coming out with the the glasses, you know, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. Oculus is starting to their their sales are starting to roar, you know, but there's a lot of companies that make virtual reality glasses. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, because this is the Internet, um, with any, I mean, with any businesses, yeah, like, I mean, e even if, even if, let's say, Facebook bought up Sandbox, they bought up the Central Land, they bought mm -hmm. up the top five spaces. I don't, I don't think it's gonna really change anything because not every platform can provide everything, right? Nope. It, nope. If you're going into a virtual world to shop, if you're going into a virtual world to play games, if you're going into a virtual world for a certain aesthetic, there's mm -hmm. a lot of different reasons to join different platforms. Uh, just like you know, there's gonna be a lot of different reasons to join certain metaverses. From okay. what I can see, most most metaverses, you know, they're they're trying to find their own uniqueness to it. You know, what makes them unique, and that's really the only way you're gonna stand the test of time is if you're unique. unique. So I think there, there's gonna be a lot more players in the game, and they're all gonna have their unique spin on it of what they provide in each you know world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about Apple? Apple is the largest company in the world. They're coming out with glasses too, <laughs> and they've got a ton of money. You they know, do have a and, ton of money. And and Microsoft is a far second. Mm -hmm. Microsoft That's just bought up Acti Activision. They sure they want to take a, a plunge into the metaverse. So mm, you know they did. So so you know when I, when I was thinking about that, and then you know there, there's jokes about Apple being the iPhone company mm -hmm. instead of calling it apple call it iphone because most of their yeah. sales are coming from the iphone, iPhone right? that is absolutely true yeah and i was thinking about actually i was thinking about this today leading mm -hmm. up to this okay you've got sales you've got your product it's driving mm -hmm. your sales eventually it's going to mature yep so what next i would say excuse me i would say in my opinion for a lot of these well-established companies, well, I, Facebook is a little different because Facebook has always been like an online company. Facebook has necessarily never sold a you know product like an iPhone or anything like that. They always been like a social media network. So that's different for them. But for like an Apple, right? 
you never I, I think that Apple is for sure going to get into the metaverse, but to the extent of which we might see Facebook getting into it or Microsoft or even possibly let's say Google or something like that, I don't think that's going to happen, you know, right away or even, you know, well within like 10 years, 15 years, because Apple, they already make so much money off of the iPhones. They already make so much money off of the laptops. They're already making so much money off of the different chips that they're selling out. And they're even looking to build their own um, Apple car. And when you think about what Apple's already doing, because they already have such a structure that's set up in this, I mean, Apple's been around for ages now. And I mean, not really, but, you know, relatively speaking, they've been around a lot longer than a good amount of companies. And because of this, when you think about what Apple has already done and all the people who are, you know, heavily invested into Apple, a lot of these people that are giving Apple money or invested into it, they're not going to say, okay, yeah, we're well behind you. If you guys just deviate from the norm and go straight into the metaverse and just start building up the metaverse, like for Facebook, they can do that. They can afford that luxury because they're already an online company. So the next idea is, okay, how can we continue to grow online? How can we continue to progress and keep our edge online? Oh, the metaverse is next. Apple, you can't say, hey, you know, how can we continue to build the better smartphones of the world, the better laptops of the world, the better chips of the world? You can't say, okay, well, now we're moving into the metaverse online. I don't think that's necessarily the next move for Apple or for even like, for Tesla, right? Tesla is another company. I don't think they would necessarily get into the metaverse because that's just not their gameplay. That's not how they're really going to make their Apple, money. Apple's a little different. I would say uh, the first thing they'll they'll do probably is make like an Apple wallet for cryptocurrencies. Probably, I think that'll be their first step before they go yeah, into easily, metaverse. They have to take uh, that step first. Easily. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you said Tesla. I'm hearing a lot of Tesla. And from what I understand, the big priority is to build a robot. So you said they're not going to, it's like, te there's a Tesla robot is a big uh, priority. Uh, when I, like, when you think about Tesla, like, not even, I wouldn't say just Tesla. I mean, because the, at the end of the day, the top of the company is going to be led, like, unlike, you know, other companies. For oh, it's the Neuralink, the Neuralink. Team. Yeah, the Neuralink. Unlike other companies where they might have a team of people. Companies like Apple, when they had Steve Jobs or, you know, companies like Tesla, how they have uh, Elon Musk, those are going to be spearheaded by whoever's at the top, the geniuses at the top. And I think Elon Musk, he is getting into a lot of different things, whether it's Neuralink, whether it's, you know, SpaceX, whether it's Tesla, whether it's the boring company and building the underground tunnels to be able to go from New York to L.A. in less than an hour, things like that. But a lot of these different companies is still, like I said, I don't believe that they can necessarily get into the metaverse because they've already built such a foundation of providing some real world use case, not saying the metaverse isn't real world, but I'm talking about offering physical products, physical services to their customers and just deviating from that norm. Customers are going to start saying, okay, well, if you're not doing it, well, let me go to your competitor who is going to provide me this value. And, you know, if you see a lot of these companies, they've literally been getting more and more value recently before this entire uh, decline in the markets, for instance, with Apple, they are the most valuable company in the world. And, you know, now it's just like if they were to deviate from that norm, do they really get their value from the metaverse, especially in such a new and burgeoning space? I don't really think so. I mean, of course it could happen. They have plenty of money, plenty of team, plenty of people that they can put onto that job. But that's just, like I said, such a developing space. That's just, you know, why go with something that could be when you have something that will be. So, yeah. Well, we got a question. Mm -hmm. uh, Shook Focus Digital says Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg's concept of the phone just being an extension of yourself in the metaverse. You think Apple will take a shot at building that technology? I think definitely for sure. Because, you know, when I heard they were coming out with the Apple car, mm -hmm. I realized that they're really trying to, like, they're even coming out with, like, Apple Home. Like, they, they really want to make Apple, like, an on all purpose, you know, utility for your life. So it only makes sense that if you go into a virtual world, you go into the metaverse, they'd want you to use, you know, their technology. Mm -hmm. So I yeah I wouldn't say that it wouldn't happen, but I don't think that's their first you know that's their that's not their first you know uh, main mission mm -hmm. because you know like like Frank said Facebook is an internet company that you know it did be smart for them to get into this kind of stuff, uh, but Apple themselves like I think they're gonna they're focusing on the cars the home all the, the appliances first make it so mm -hmm. that it's uh, it's a product that you can't live without before they get into the online. You know, yeah. realm. and then when they do get in the wrong nine realm, I think they're going to start with like, you know, having a Facebook wallet, you mm -hmm. know, cryptocurrencies, being able to exchange them and all that kind of stuff first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me on my end, I, to be honest, I would say I'm a little confused uh, about this question. Um, yeah. Now I'll be a little confused about this question because I kind of get on one end, I kind of get where they're getting at, but then on the other end, it's just like, 
with the phone being an extension of yourself in the metaverse and then Apple taking a shot at building that technology, well, Apple isn't building a technology for you to be able to get into the metaverse, you know, to begin with. Like I said, they're already building iPhones, they're building laptops. This has nothing at all to do with the metaverse. They're just trying to provide the best service possible for you to be able to say, hey, we, I mean, not even say, hey, we already have like, you know, I wouldn't say a status quo, but it's already a thing where it's like, if you pretty much don't have an iPhone, not not saying people don't look down at you, but people look at uh, people with Androids funny. And it's just like, you know, that's already kind of the thing that Apple's kind of capitalizing off of. Like, oh, you have to have, you know, the iPhone. You have to have the Apple Watch. You have to have the AirPods. You know, all these gotta different have the things. Mac. <laughs> exactly. Got to have the Mac. And I don't really think that, you know, getting into the metaverse, like I said, is their first priority because they've already established themselves as a company where we provide physical products and we provide uh, physical services. So if they're saying, hey, we're going to continue capitalizing off of that until pretty much everybody on earth is, you know, using Apple products, that's a different story. But going into the metaverse, like I said, uh, maybe, yeah, like maybe it, they will get into it. Maybe. I couldn't say for sure. It, it's not it's not comparable because the things that Facebook is doing to further the space, mm -hmm. I don't think Apple's willing to put the work in to further the space of mm -hmm. the metaverse. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. they're just gonna wanna, you know, not you know, take you know, you know, just you know, go in once it's built. Yeah, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Facebook is putting so much money, like they're coming out with the haptic <laughs> feedback gloves, they're making the glasses, <laughs> they're, they're doing so many tests. Like, I you know, if you watched uh Mark Zuckerberg's you know introduction to Meta and mm -hmm. you see all the things that they're trying to do and trying to implement, they're they're oh, going man. full force into it, and I don't think um, because I think he knows in the back of his mind, there's only so much so far that a social media company can go and that they need to get a stronghold on the next version of social media, which will be mm. Web3 and the metaverse. Yeah. And I don't think Apple, Apple's going to want to just, you know, plant their seeds once that, once the, mm -hmm. once the garden is already there, they're going to just take yep. their little section. Mm -hmm. mm. See so that that's good. I think. I think Apple, they're, they're looking forward. A lot mm -hmm. of their sales are coming from that iPhone mm -hmm. and it's going to mature. Mm -hmm. And and things are going to essentially saturate. So mm -hmm. either they're going to have to move to other markets. So you think about Netflix. Netflix is saturated in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. So they're moving to other markets. They're changing their model. They're having a lot of content being developed in, in uh, other countries, developing countries, mm -hmm. making That's content. True. Squid yeah. Game opened up the the, the, the mm -hmm. path for that. Yeah, it sure so, did. It sure did, yeah. <laughs> so, so I think they, 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 they have to find another way to maneuver. Microsoft and that Activision deal, I mean... It, it, mm -mm. Personally, in my opinion, that was a metaverse play. Mm -hmm. They even said it was you know, a metaverse play. Yeah, it is. Huh? Yeah, they, they said it themselves was a metaverse play. Yeah. But a very, very hard metaverse play. They've got the hollow lens. They've got mm -hmm. the cloud. And, and now they've got the, the this video game infrastructure. So, uh, yeah. oh, we got somebody in there. Um, so I think it's interesting. I think there's got to be a move. I think there's going to be a move. So I think yeah. Apple will take a shot how it'll mm -hmm. look, if it'll be an acquisition. Mm -hmm. And they've got the money. They've yeah. got the and, cash. Yeah, I would say, and this is what I'll say about Apple. Like I, like I already said, I don't think Apple's looking to actively just kind of build out the metaverse. That's not their thing. They have already, like, you know, they have plenty of money. They don't need to go build it. They can let the other people build it out and just get into it. Like they already said, they can let them build it out. They plant their seeds in the garden once it's done. Now, what Apple could do, you know, with Apple, and this is the unique thing about Apple, because a lot of companies, they have to pretty much go chasing the next big thing to be able to, you know, kind of become great, right? Now, of course, after Steve Jobs died, like, it was pretty much like once Steve Jobs, you know, or while he was here, when he brought out the different types of iPods, whether it was the Nano, the Touch, the, you know, the actual iPhone, and just kept upgrading that, that was like the next revolutionary thing, that was the next groundbreaking thing, and of course, once he left, that was a sad day, but, you know, it was pretty much, they were waiting on the consumers to tell them, okay, what do they need next, and the next biggest thing that Apple was really able to come out with that really just, I would say, was kind of groundbreaking was the AirPods, because a lot of people were like, okay, wow, this is something we've never had, this is something we've never really seen, so this is something that's really changing the market, and I think Apple just really needs to wait on, you know, the kind of signal to say, hey this is what the consumer needs and i'm sure they'll figure that out they have plenty of money to be able to figure that out and once they figure that out and let's say for instance right if it's dealing with the metaverse and they say okay we need to 
better interface between users going into the metaverse, rather, you know, instead of just logging onto your laptop, you know, what if it's just, you know, a click on your glasses or, you know, you just tap on your earbuds and boom, you're already in there. Maybe they'll figure that out and say, hey, this is our new product. This is how you get in the metaverse and boom, that takes Apple to the next level. So I think that's what Apple really, you know, is needing and or, you know, when they do need to get into the metaverse, they'll probably figure that out. But, you know, just regular metaverse building that out or any type of service that they might provide, that's, you know, a little bit later down the line. So that's a good point. Innovation innovation yep. <laughs> that was good and and gentlemen we're we're almost at time so i want to be respectful of that and but i do have a lot like a parting question what is your favorite metaverse platform and why mike let's start with you <laughs> my favorite metaverse platform oh one that's not built out yet. It's actually called Treeverse. They're uh, my favorite right uh, now. I have some Treeverse products that I'm willing to hold until it's fully fleshed out. They are. Uh, they have. They are building out a game. They're building out a world. Uh, they. They've had. They already started off with having a world where you can showcase your NFT art. You can interact with people. You can. You know, do some community stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. People love this so much that they, you know, and this is where it comes with having a good team, that they decided to, you know, take that money that they got from the project and, and you know, transform it into a game. Uh, and so now, you know, they've upgraded what the game looks like. They're adding a whole, like, fighting database, but still keep keeping that community and that metaverse aspect where, you know, you can still showcase your art. You have your, your apartments and your land and stuff like that. And uh, I think they're going to be a big player in the game. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely going to be one of the biggest players in the game. You can check out mm -hmm. their project on OpenSea. Uh, they have, like, I think three projects, NF Trees, um, Treeverse Plots, and Timeless Characters. So they came out with their own collection of, like, NFT profile picture type things, like anime style, like, art for characters for your skins in the game. So definitely check that out. It's going to be good gonna be good awesome. and last thing they also they also have an, a, another like side business where they're trying to be the first blockchain production company so they actually came out with like a, a short form movie you know based off like you know nft and blockchain characters and stuff like that mm -hmm. and they're there it's called interleave and it's like a blockchain uh production company is dope uh should focus ask you to say the platform again if you could say it one more time it's called treeverse Treeverse, T R E E V E R S E. Treeverse, mm -hmm, definitely mm -hmm. check them out and uh, follow yeah, their definitely. stuff on Twitter. They're active on Twitter. Uh, you can check out their movie on YouTube, and you can uh, follow their Discord. And they're on OpenSea. It's Ethereum yeah. based. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, Frank. Uh, I'll say for me, I. I really don't have a favorite right now. Um, you know, to be honest, uh, you know, maybe I'll go into the metaverse every now and again, but you know, I'm not on regularly like days it might be. And I do see, you know, the different opportunities that lie with each, for instance, like I already mentioned earlier, and you know, our kind of talk and discussion, you know, you can go into certain metaverse and you know, you can see concerts happening, you can go into certain metaverses and you just interact with people there. I've even got I've gone into the metaverse with Deza and I've seen, you know, horse racing. Yeah, you can go better on the horse racing in the metaverse. And even away from that, like if we saw the meta you know facebook's meta you know at the actual like metaverse uh you know they were talking about how you can go into the metaverse and you can have meetings with people you can go shopping you can go visit you know different things like that and it's just i think a lot of these different metaverses have a lot of different things that they can offer and really like they already said too you know they're trying to figure out a unique way that they can position themselves to be able to say hey this is how we're going to counter our end of the market and really make a name for ourselves and for me personally I haven't really found anything that I necessarily like and really say, okay, hey, this is, you know, my favorite platform. I definitely see the value in each of them. And I, honestly, I'm definitely planning on buying some Decentraland property very, very soon. But other, that's not to say it's my favorite, but I'm just looking at the different options right now. And, you know, I would say I like, like Decentraland Sandbox. I'm using those two the most, of course, but, you know, other than that, no real favorite, to be honest. So. Got you. Yeah, so that's good. That's good. Uh, my favorite platform is spatial mm, okay and it's free platform you can go in there um 
uh, initially it had a, a and it still does have an enterprise focus mm-hmm. so you can get in there you it, it's a meeting space um, what's neat is that it scans you, so it, it creates kind of, kind of like uh, the horizon, an mm-hmm. avatar with your face, and you can put your shirt mm-hmm. on it, so it looks v- very realistic, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. And they have a feature called the brainstorming room. Mm-hmm. So you can go in there, you can pull up web pages, you can have sticky notes. So for me, as an educator, I can have students in there. Mm, and okay. we can engage and and we can we can have some discussion and I, I could teach in there. The, okay. So I really like that. It's a tighter space than Verbella. So Verbella frames, you can do the same thing, but it's a large it has a lot huge halls and and uh, large spaces. But this is very compact. So mm-hmm. it's like you're in a, a smaller room. So, OK, uh, yeah, I, I kind of like spatial that. because. They, uh, you know, they, like I was saying earlier, you got to pick your niche of what you're willing to do and what you're willing to allow. And yeah, they got the, the, the real, the real world look, you know, the more, you know, I think, you know, more people will be, you know, more people will be able to ease into the look of it and, uh, and get the idea of it. And, you know, they allow, I, I you know, a lot, there are some metaverse spaces that don't really coincide with blockchain. But at least spatial, like you could still hook up with like a MetaMask. So mm-hmm. you know that ha- it implements some Web three into it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I do like that. Yep. Yeah, no. and you can access mm-hmm. it on your phone and uh, you know on your computer pretty pretty easily. Go mm-hmm. go ahead, Frank. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, do you have to go soon, Professor? Because if not, I do actually have a couple questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the question? Uh, well, actually, I have three questions. So my first question. Uh, or I'll give a little bit of kind of background to the viewers as well. When you, you know, trade options or, you know, for instance, if you're selling stock, right, you already, you automatically have to pay capital gains taxes. Now, as you get into the age of the metaverse and things of that nature, uh, how do you think that the taxes will evolve according to that? Or do you think that, you know, we will be taxed extra according to, you know, when we get into the metaverse, when we are buying things in the metaverse, or will it just be kind of like, you know, you bought it in the metaverse, you get taxed the same as you would in real life. Or if you bought something in the metaverse, you would be pretty much taxed the same, or would you be, you know, additionally taxed or would there be some type of extra taxation? Are you talking from a personal perspective or from is a business holding this or is this an individual? Uh, let's just say an individual perspective. No, we're not going to get to the business. Let's just say an individual perspective <laughs> right now. <laughs> mm. Well, that, that's a good question. It, I would say you've got, it's looked at more like 4X. So I say it's looked at more like 4X mm. and you would either have some type of capital gain you would have some type of capital gain uh, because you're holding an asset. Mm-hmm, you're you're mm-hmm. selling these. You'd have some type of capital gain. Absolutely. OK, OK, OK. That makes a lot of sense. Definitely. And now my second thing that I'll ask you now, this is a I would it's definitely in the realm of accounting. But I would say as the metaverse develops, right? Of course, you know, you know, there's a lot of speculation going on of, oh, are people money, uh, money laundering with NFTs? Are they using, you know, different types of cryptocurrencies to be able to launder their money? Uh, as the metaverse kind of develops and as we're able to build up digital spaces, not necessarily in an anonymous fashion, but you are able to build like some type of digital profile that's not directly linked to who you actually are away from like, you know, you yourself using it. Do you think that's going to uh, there's going to be more people trying to, I would say, on the I don't want to say evil, but more people on like the negative side of things trying to get in and trying to figure out, uh, figure out a way to kind of cheat the system and say, hey, I can make my money. I can put it in here. And not only can I put it in here, you know, I can get away relatively clean and, you know, not have to worry about any repercussions, whether that's with the government, whether it's with taxes, whether it's with, you know, any type of income type of situation. Well, I mean, already right now, it's it's kind of the wild, wild west because it's not regulated. So. When you talk about uh, publicly traded, so that goes back to that going concern point we were talking yeah. about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you've got a publicly traded company, I mean, they've got to have their their financials audited. They've got to file a 10K. So, so and, and in their initial registration, they have to mm-hmm. file the S1. Mm-hmm. So they have to go through a whole process of due diligence mm-hmm. and disclosure. So you have a lot of things that are being disclosed as well. 
Then when you talk about broker dealers and you're doing trades, Mm -hmm. you're buying and selling stocks, this is reported. It's registered. Definitely, definitely. This is also why you is this why you asked that offshore question too earlier? (laughs) Well, the the yeah, it's tied to that because you have to think about really I'll I'll go deep into that. One, Mm -hmm. I was looking into working on a research project. Okay. On the metaverse Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with another professor. And that professor, the first question. So we were talking about the sandbox. We were talking about, well, okay, let's pull up the financials. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't get the financials. I don't, it's not public. It's a, it's, it's not a publicly traded company. Mm. And, and from what I remember, the sandbox is not located in the U S if I'm not Mm -hmm. mistaken. So you, you can't get that information. So that, that, that ties into, so Mm -hmm. if they're, if the sandbox is making money, are not making money, only the sandbox knows that, you know, information. I'm not mm-hmm. able to find that out. Yeah. Now yeah, to, yeah. to Dave's point, you can, you can read the white paper, mm-hmm. but there's no regulation or law that, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing there to, to kind of enforce. There's no enforcement. Well, yeah, yeah I, I I kind of get that, but at the same, I do have to give just a bit of pushback because let's say sure. for instance, right? That's good. If I am uh, if I am buying, let's say for instance, I buy a sandbox property, I sell it. Now, if I if I keep it on like you know the sandbox platform or something, you know, of course, if sandbox is in, you know within the U.S., you know, it's whoever, whatever country's regulations, whatever the taxation laws is, you know, I have to adhere to those. But if I let's say for instance I have my MetaMask linked and I'm transferring that Ethereum or whatever you know you know uh, the coin is that I sold it off back into my Coinbase wallet back into whatever wallet that I'm using, if you signed up as a U.S. you know resident and you're using cryptocurrency in the U.S. with whatever uh, with whatever wallet you have, they automatically have your data, they automatically have your purchase history, they automatically know what you're buying and selling in terms of your income and stuff. So you do have to you know kind of pay taxes on that. So I don't think that you know it's just going to be completely like you know vague as to okay who bought this who sold this because they're going to they're going to know and they're definitely going to get taxed on that in terms of you know crypto gain or not just crypto gains but capital gains in terms of you know buying and selling whether it be in the metaverse if you're bringing it back to your traditional wallet uh but yeah on the other hand too what i do think is kind of unique about the whole situation is that when you do see all these people kind of going into the metaverse as well there is a kind of you know just uh just a, it's a whole scenario where it's like you know, I can go into the metaverse and I can go deal with someone else and I can transact with them. That might necessarily that might not necessarily be seen, you know, uh, in terms of, OK, what's the, what's going on in terms of this deal? Like if I let's say, for instance, if days were in China, right, if days were in the China and, you know, our, you know, and uh, I don't know, let's say I was in the Bahamas or something. or Let's, let's just say I was back in the U.S. And, you know, I say, hey, days, I want to buy your property. Uh, you know, I want to buy your sandbox property. I go do that deal. You know, we kind of transact. But that transaction isn't necessarily registering because I didn't send that money back to my coin base wallet or something i think that's where we start to see you know okay what's really going on with the money who's being taxed that's where we kind of see more of the wild wild west but people do have to cash out eventually of course and i think that's when people you know they'll have to show that on the taxes yeah but when when you're talking about if if we're talking about regulation you're talking about uh 1099 dividend Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which have to be sent out this is a there's regulations around that the other thing is with the sandbox, or you talk about Tesla, mm-hmm. I, I can go and pull up. We can go to Edgar. We can pull up mm-hmm. uh, Tesla's 10K. Yep, we, know who the, we know who the CEO, we know their address. We know where they're registered. We know who's running the company. Who's in charge of sandbox? Great question. See, that, that's the thing. <laughs> um, some companies are willing, and that's why I tell people, like, you know, we tell people that follow us that you you probably shouldn't. It's not in your best interest to get in a project where they don't have their creators and CEOs and all that uh, fully doxxed. And you know who they are. You know, you have their main profiles and all that kind of stuff. You probably shouldn't get into that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I see what I, I kind of see what you're saying. I kind of see what Frank is saying. I think when it comes to like the a retail investor, you know. When it comes to a retail investor. You know, you can you're safe when it comes to the fact that it's on the blockchain, right? So if a company says, okay, we make 2.5% off of every sale of our land, then you could be sure that that's going to be implemented through the smart contracts. 
Um, like I said, you know, if you can't read smart contracts yourself, you can go to a website like Rug Doctor or Token Sniffer to make sure that the stuff is on the up and up, the, the contracts are on the up and up and all that kind of stuff. But but then you are definitely right. The, the, the government can't really audit what they're doing. I, I don't I don't believe they can't really audit the company itself. But the retail investors can make sure they're safe to go through the contracts. Mm. And when you said safe, there's another thing. There, there's no uh, FDIC. There's no uh, SIPC mm -hmm. uh, that you have on investment products mm -hmm. with uh, crypto or you know. Thank so, you. Uh, but what's the third question? That was good. Uh, my third question would more or less be when people are getting into the metaverse, right? You know, when we think about. Uh, I think it's the old adage when people talk about, you know, a lot of people when California went into its gold rush and in general, people thought a lot of money was with the, you know, the gold, finding the gold, mining the gold. But a lot of the people who really made a good amount of money were the people who were providing the pickaxes, a lot of people who were providing the equipment. So on your end, do you think that, for instance, in terms of accounting or just in general, do you think it would be wise for people to do a, you know, continue to invest in, you know, NFTs or look to invest in NFTs or even from the accounting perspective, like I said, do you think that would be wise for them? to kind of learn more about the accounting, you know, kind of sphere as it pertains to NFTs, as it pertains to the uh, metaverse, as we kind of get into it, because this is a new space. Like, you know, if we think about taxation laws, you know, accounting as it applies to traditional assets, as it applies to traditional investing and stuff like that, we kind of know how it goes. You know, when it's tax season, people go to the tax person, you know, they get that handled. But if they start investing in crypto, if they start investing in NFTs in the metaverse, that's an entirely new space. That's entirely new laws, regulation. And there's a lot of stuff that we don't mm -hmm. even know. So do you think this is a, you know, potential opportunity for a lot of people to be able to say, OK, this is where I can grow. This is where I can learn. This is where the profession can get taken to the next level. Or is this just this place where it's just like, OK, Maybe we might want to see what happens with this first before we kind of get into this. Maybe you want, uh, we might want to see what happens uh, with everything going on within the metaverse with NFTs before we really say, OK, this needs our stamp of approval. This needs our expertise with it. Yeah, that, I, I kind of get two questions out of that one, because I think you talked about the, the accounting portion of it. So mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the U.S., we have something called GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, mm -hmm. right? Those mm -hmm. those are the rules and regulations for uh, accounting in the in the U.S. and and they're what are known as rules, or they call standards that are issued. So right now, you're absolutely correct. And the, the reason I was asking that question is this personal or business? You've got more what we call guidance or more standard on business versus personal. However, even with that stated, because as you said, this is new and evolving. So that's the other thing It's evolving yeah. at such a rapid pace. The standards, it, it, they're not they're not matching up with the actual environment that we have right now. Is, I hope that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it, the standards haven't caught up, and it doesn't look mm -hmm. like they will catch up. So okay. most of the standards. So if you look on the standards on business, it's around mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. it's it's really it's really around Bitcoin, and so from there, the guidance you you move off of that guidance, which is around Bitcoin, on your treatment of cryptocurrency, and then you move mm -hmm. into NFTs and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. um, so, so on that side of it, to say that accounting is still catching up with with a lot of this, it's not okay. up to date, right? Okay. Now, as far and because of that, I think it's very important for for everyone to learn as much as possible about crypto, about NFTs, about this space. Mm -hmm. To learn as much as possible, that you you can. Even if, because you got you got to think about it, you've got some people who who are nervous about it, who mm -hmm. worry yeah, about absolutely. it. Some people are looking at the news. Oh my gosh, Bitcoin dropped fifty percent. <laughs> I'm afraid of you know of crypto. <laughs> yeah, so, so you have yeah, some people that are worried about it. However, you're still impacted by it in some way either directly or indirectly, you're living in the world. You should, you should at least learn about it and understand it. Mm -hmm. So that's my take. Even if you're not going to invest, you need to mm -hmm. understand this. Ah, that's a great point. That's a really great point. Mm. 
That's definitely what I tell people. So, and especially when you look at uh, uh, businesses that are moving into this area, mm-hmm. uh, I, I the other time we were on the live stream with uh, Underdog Crypto, mm, he yep, made a point yeah, I that, that I, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't think about it, but he was like, okay. So my my uh, first book is called the the Hitchhiker's Guide to Virtual Reality, mm-hmm. and it's it's about it, uh, implementing and using virtual reality in the in the classroom. And he made a point, and he was absolutely right. And, you know uh, that when I wrote the book, people were like, well, what is virtual or the metaverse? Why is this important? Why does it matter? Right? But now. Mm-hmm. When Facebook, when Mark Zuckerberg came in and said, hey, we're changing the name to Meta, I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? So, so it's important to learn about it, especially from my space as a, a professor. And where I'm going with that is my job isn't to prepare my students mm-hmm. for today's world. Right? So if I've got a freshman right? Mm -hmm. He he or she's going to graduate in four years. The world is going to be totally different. Think about how things were four years before, right? So in (laughs) in four years from, yeah, it's totally different. I've got to prep them for the uh, (laughs) rules. I was like, yeah, I was. I was like, yes. But yeah, I'm preparing them for the world uh, moving forward. Mm. Same thing it, it, you were asking about if someone should learn about it. Yeah, you're in the way. Th- this thing is moving rapidly, right? Mm-hmm. Rapidly. And you need to learn about it, whether whether yeah. you're you're in it or not. Yeah. Well, and the so only reason I asked that kind of final question uh, with about learning about it is because if you, and of course, you know, there's always going to be the haters, there's always going to be the, the, you know, the degenerate people trying to just kind of slander it. And, you know, a lot of people, if you kind of go onto the, you know, internet, whether it be, whether it just be regular traditional social media, uh, whether you just go on different uh, forms, whether it be the news, blogs, and stuff like that, they either A, poke fun at, you know, NFTs, the metaverse, cryptocurrency, or they just kind of, you know, saying, oh, you know, this is a terrible investment. Look how volatile it is. Look, you know, at everything that's going on. And I think that when people are kind of making fun of it, they're kind of, you know, those same people who, when it gets too late, they're like, well, damn, I wish I could have invested into this you know, way earlier. I wish I got into this at the ground floor, but it's just like, you know, you guys were, you know, speaking down on it so early, you know, you said, oh, you'll never get into it. It's a scam. Uh, you know, this is just a waste of time. You know, it's just, you know, a miracle if you make any money with it. But the reality is a lot of the big companies, as we already discussed so far, a lot of the big companies are already putting their money into this. They're already developing the space and there's already a good amount of legitimacy within the space. But, you know, there's so many people who just really, I don't, I can't tell you why. I can't tell you why, but they don't see the value in the space. And I, you know, I don't understand it personally, but I do think that they should learn about it. I do think that they should, you know, figure out a way to kind of get involved with it, whether or not be, if it does have to be uh, investing in it, you know, finding a profession that might deal directly or indirectly with it. So, yeah. I mean, there's not an excuse for ignorance. I, I don't, I guess that's kind of a hard way to say it, but <laughs> I mean, it's, it's important to under, you know, to, to know what's going on. Um, there's a, uh, what is it? This, there's a rule where they talk about, uh, what is it, uh, technology, it's a 20, now I can't think of the name of the rule, but mm-hmm. at one point it took 10 years to develop something and then 10 years for it to be implemented. So it would take a total of 20 years, which is, it, many people consider that a generation, right? Yeah, so, yeah definitely. So let's say you got the T, it took 10 years to develop the TV, the black and white TV, 10 mm-hmm. years for it to be, widely adopted and everyone using it. So that's 20 yeah. years. Then Absolutely. 10 years to develop the color TV, then another 10 yeah. years for it to be widely adopted, right? So yeah. that's 20 Absolutely. years, so it's a generation. Yeah. But my understanding of things today in technology, it, it it's, it's a cycle of 12 months because based on com- processing speed and things, it's mm-hmm. 12 months, 18 months, 12 months, right? So now, it, and when I was discussing this, someone was saying the cycle is six months, six months. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It can move from six to six months. I so, could see that. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Especially in the, the cryptocurrency NFT space. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I'll give you a hint. Definitely um, look out for AI NFTs, oh, artificial intelligence NFTs. The AI NFTs. That's gonna, that's gonna be the next one for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and that's a good point. So with knowing how rapidly things are going and changing, it's important that you understand. Now, are you going to be able to absorb and 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 know everything? Mm. No, probably not. But you need to know something, right? You yeah. need to have some type of basic awareness. That's that. That is my opinion. That that, yeah. that would be my take on that. Yeah. That was good. That was some 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 good questions. Good. Qu- oh, before we go, um, how can uh, how can they reach you? you? Can tell how how can they get in touch with you? How can uh, they reach you? So you can reach us obviously at Cobb's Capital. You can follow us on YouTube. Um, if you go to our YouTube, you could definitely see our Discord link. You could join the Discord. Um, me personally, uh, you could definitely follow me on Twitter uh, at Days of Beats. I'm also a producer as well. Uh, I produce music. I make music. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter at Days of Beats. Uh, I mostly just, you know, do all type of. I just research all type of crypto content and NFT content. Um, and then you can also, if you do like music and stuff, you can check me out on YouTube at Days of, Be- uh, Days of Beats on YouTube. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Instagram as well. Twitter, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Too. Yep. Awesome. So, yeah, we'd be, we be giving it up in the, the podcast <laughs> on Discord. We'd be having uh, yeah, definitely talking about stuff. So if you want to learn more about that stuff, you can definitely uh, join the conversation. Yeah, for sure. And just to kind of add on top, you know, Daisy already said, you know, if you go to any of our YouTube videos, you know, you can find our Discord link to join up. We're discussing NFTs, crypto, stocks. Like I said, I trade stocks every day. I trade options every day. We're talking about all that, you know, all the time. Uh, you know, you can find me on uh, Twitter. Uh, personally, you can find me on Twitter at it's ITS, Frank Cobbs, C-O-B-B-S, uh, like Cobbs Capital. Uh, you can also find me, you know, the actual brand itself, me and Daisy. You can find at Cobbs Capital on Twitter. That's where we are. And, you know, other than that we do have tiktok as well uh where we kind of post stuff as well that'll be under it's frank cobbs as well uh you were going to change that soon and yeah that's that's pretty much it we can find us you know we're just posting co- uh, content all the time we're just trying to grow we're trying to get the word out of just about you know getting people more invested getting people more in tune because at the end but of the, the most day, funds in the discord for sure yeah for sure, for sure. <laughs> the value in the discord it is it is well, well, days up, Frank. Thank you so much, uh, and and everybody who's watching. Thank you so much. I mean, we we've been having some good comments in the chat, so I appreciate that. Oh, oh wait a minute, ha, we got underdog crypto here. Ha. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right, and we got something coming with the uh, crypto intelligence committee. Uh, hopefully, uh, next week next week so that'll be mm, good so, okay thanks okay. so you gotta stop by thanks underdog mm-hmm. for stopping by and we're going to sign out thank definitely, you everybody definitely yep appreciate right, you appreciate yep. you thanks for having us professor absolutely thank you.